Well, today I'm going to present you about the Yonkers JU87 D Stuka, aka the Screaming Birds of Prey. As you've been wondering, what is a Stuka? You can see in this picture, a Stuka is one of the well known military artifacts during World War II. So well known, you can call it a legendary if you want. It served the German forces very efficiently. It even got the nickname, the Wings of the Luftwaffe. That's the German Air Force in German. Who did the Stuka support in World War II? Everything has a purpose. So this is its purpose. It served the Blitzkrieg. The Blitzkrieg was a strategy that the German army commanded thousands of forces like panzers and armed vehicles to quickly rush towards the enemy, shooting down any landmarks, any enemies, and any distractions they see along the way. They would clear the path for infantrymen and paramedic vehicles so that they could push the board German borders forward, increasing their territory. As you can see here, the Blitzkrieg will be a lot of like an army of cars, of tanks and other anti-tank anti -tank vehicles. So they will attack with surprise, without warning, at the enemy bunker line, as you can see here. So how did the Stuka support the Blitzkrieg? It bombed the hard targets like bunkers and artilleries and a lot of more things. It supported the Blitzkrieg in case anything get wrong, like if they split up, or if they get defeated, the Stuka will be a secondary force and ambush the enemy. The Stuka's origins, so everything doesn't really not have an origin, everything has an origin. The principal designer was Hermann Pullman. An estimated of 1,559 type D3s were made during the war and about 6.500 were made in total. The version one had a twin tail and used the Rolls-Royce Kestrel engine. But if you don't know what a twin tail is, it would start off with a fin and then two rectangular stabilizers like this. And then on the other side, they'll have another fin like this. So you can see that's how a twin fin tail looks like. The version 2 and 3 used the Junkers Jumo 210 AA engine and it had a single, singular fin tail, which it looks like this, which is like a conventional aircraft that we have now, it had a, tw a singular fin tail. Do you think it would be perfect? Everything had a bad side. The, its bombs, at least, weighed to up, up to 150 pounds. So its bombs cause the weight, it increasing the dr drag when you fly, and then making it even slower, an easier target for the AA anti-aircraft guns. 18 shoot Stukas were shot down at the Battle of Britain because of this disadvantage. It's so slow, and when you dive bomb, it goes really close to the ground, making you an easier target. It can't compete with the Spitfire because when you're a Spitfire is an England bomb, a fighter, so when a fighter, you gotta be fast and easy maneuverable to fly really efficiently in the battleground. But the Stuka was a bomber, so it was slow and hard to maneuver, and you can't perform the tactics like the BF 109, German, German fighter. How did the Stuka dive bomb? Well, it was vulture like. First, they circle above their enemy. Then they peel off to dive. You can see here, it's peeling off to dive. And then they dive almost vertically, which is really dangerous. They will pull up at two or 3,000 feet after they just drop the bombs, or maybe fling the bomb, because you don't want the bomb to hit the prop. You have to fling it off the belly. And at the point of pull up, you get tunnel vision is where all your blood from your eyes gets sucked down the blood down your head and you can't see anything, it's just black. How to identify a Stuka? 
Well, you might be wondering how to identify it because if you can't identify a plane in World War II, how can you classify it? It would stop dive bombing, starting from 10,000 feet, and drop, drop its bombs at two or 3,000 feet, like I said. It has rectangular stabilizers, inverted gull wings, and the gull wing, well, it looks like this, this, but inverted makes it looks like this. So you can see here it's inverted gull wing. It's fixed landing gears because it can't move it up or down because it's a bomber. If you move the landing gear up or down, it will increase more drag, making it even slower. And the narrow tipped wings. The Stuka's autopilot might be one of the most interesting things about the Stuka. It's programmed to pull up after a dive when you estimate, you the programmers estimate you have tunnel vision. It's what, like I said before, it will fly automatically in the flight when they estimate the pilot has recovered and then he'll take control again. The Stuka fun facts. The Stuka is one of the most terrifying, the Stuka siren was one of the most terrifying sounds of World War II. It's caused by a propeller near the landing gear, which is very, very annoying if you hear that. It can be turned off at the early generations, distracting both the crew and enemy below. Later, it could be turned off with the switch, and that was a very good joy for the pilots because you don't want to hear a siren the whole flight. Its engine can lift stuff to 500 pounds of cargo, and one bomb is about 150 pounds, then they will carry a field bombs. Its real meaning wasn't to destroy or shoot the enemy. It was to actually teach us a lesson about the aviation history, and we improved so much things by then. We improved manless planes and probes from the autopilot. We improved the autopilot on, on our Boeing and Airbus. And by the flight you got every day, you go by a plane. But those planes, they also use autopilot. So because of the Stuka's autopilot, they improved a lot now. If this didn't have an autopilot, we'd be really way back the now. It engraved an unforgettable memory in the history of mankind. It nearly made the Germans one. Like if they pour more creativity and knowledge, they could actually upgrade the Stuka even more and then actually winning the war, changing the course of how things are now. It could be, this should be kept in museums for research, reservations, and sightseeing. But when you're in a war, we got to remember one thing, a very valuable thing, why this artifact should be kept in museums, not just left away in the scrapyard. Because these artifacts are valuable artifacts. These artifacts, they were made in the war because when you're in a war, you pour so much determination and creativity and knowledge to create a weapon or an object that could win the war for you. So this, if the World War II didn't break out, you wouldn't even have it. Have you ever thought that in your day life? Thank you. I hope you have a good day.